One of these days, I'm gonna have a better setup and life will be all right. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanna to talk to you guys about little things that you can do pretty easily I say that lightly, but little things that you can do that will help change your life. Let's spend some time together. I didn't mean for that to sound so dramatic, but I feel like change your life, change your mindset. You know what? It, I'll let you be the judge of that, whether or not that's gonna really quote unquote change your life. But these little things that I implemented in my own life really made a huge shift in how I see my life. And just like, I think me, as a person in general. Now, a lot of it can be attributed to the fact that I think I've matured so much from who I was five years ago, 10 years ago. And a lot of these are gonna be common sense, but I do hope that you find something to take away from this. And even though it is technically quote unquote common sense, maybe you just need to look at it from a different perspective. The first little thing, the little change, a new habit, if you will, that you can implement in your daily life is to start journaling. Now, hold on, before you exit out, <laughs> give me a chance to explain. I know that not everybody is a journaling type of person, and I know that journaling can look a lot different for everybody. The way that I like to journal is I like to do it in three separate parts. Actually, I guess four, but this is the journal that I'm using right now. Um, this is my 2024 journal, but last year I used a completely different one with the same method. So you don't have to be like super into planning and super into journaling for this to help you. You can literally just grab a scrap piece of paper. You don't have to keep it as like memories like I do. So this is like an example of what I do every single day when I journal. I like to do three gratitudes every single day. And this is what I do at the very beginning of my morning when I have time to just sit down 10 minutes, map out everything. When I journal, it encompasses three gratitudes. So I start off every single day, what am I grateful for? This really helps to put me in a mindset of optimism and also thankfulness. So even though if I feel like crap, if I don't feel like life is worth living, there's always something to be grateful for in the day. I am thankful that I had a roof over my head last night. I am thankful that I had somewhere to sleep last night. I am thankful that I woke up to see another day. I'm thankful that I have food to eat, that I have clothes to wear, like literally basic little things that maybe you don't take the time to acknowledge and be grateful for. I just feel like a lot of the things that we have in our day-to-day -day life, we take for granted. Sometimes you're not thinking about where you're gonna sleep tonight. Like, you know you're gonna sleep in your bed. You're not thinking about, am I gonna eat tonight? Like, you know that maybe you might not know exactly what you're gonna eat, but many of us feel comfortable knowing that we will have dinner tonight. So by looking at life like this, it has really, really helped me be so much more grateful for what I have, so much more optimistic for life and then also in turn because I'm so grateful for even the littlest things that I have it makes me also feel more generous to be more giving it's like when I first started I, I had no idea how to start so I literally started with I'm thankful for my job I'm thankful for my food stuff like that but now I get more more into detail, more specific with the things that I'm thankful for in my life. If you can't think of it like really like specifically, that's totally fine. Just think about the three things that you're grateful for at a very high level. Like I said, there's always something, something to be grateful for. Then after I do that, I do three manifestations. Bear with me a little bit. Okay, this may sound a little woo-woo to some of you and that's totally fine. Again, journaling can be different for many people. Manifestation is what I use to tell the universe, this is what I want, this is what I desire for myself, and this is what is going to come to me. If you don't know where to start, manifestation can be as simple as just telling the universe, telling God, telling who, telling the world, this is what is coming for you. I am successful. I am deserving of all that I desire. I am happy. I am healthy. 
things like this. And when you manifest, when I manifest, I like to put it in the present tense as this, as if it's already happening. I'm like speaking my truth. There's a lot of books and stuff and a lot of content and a lot of people that talk more about this that um, are much more knowledgeable than I am. So I will look um, online and see if I can put some links in the description bar below. I hadn't really realized what it was and how it worked until I started doing it myself. And then I actually saw that the things that I wanted came into fruition. And again, it may sound very woo woo, but like, trust me. And like I said, this might not be your thing, but does it hurt? No, I think at the very beginning when I first started doing this, I was like, okay, like we'll see, like we'll see where it goes. If anything, if you take away the quote unquote woo woo stuff from this, you're basically writing down the things and desires that you want for yourself every single day so that you know you're starting your day off and you're focusing on those things that you want. It helps identify those things for you and helps almost drive you to do the things that you do. So I guess another word for it, if you don't like the word manifestation, is just identifying your goals. You may just be living like day to day to day. You might not have any goals. Just overall, what do you want for yourself? You don't have to have like big goals, like I'm gonna reach 1 million subscribers by this summer. Like it doesn't have to be grand or big or impossible even like, Literally anything that you want, anything that you desire, anything that you put your mind to, write those down. And because you wrote them down and because you keep writing it down and because you keep focusing on that for yourself, you're more inclined to make the decisions for yourself to get you closer to that goal. And then I guess like at the end of the whole journaling thing, I know this was kind of like a three-parter in one, I do my three gratitudes, my three manifestations. I do a little to-do list on the side because I like to keep track of all the little tasks I need to do. And then at the end of the day, I'll go back in and kind of put out my thoughts, how I'm feeling about the day, what happened that made me feel a certain type of way, anything that I really, really want to remember. So it's not only just a memory keeper, but it also helps me get my emotions and what I'm feeling and my thoughts and kind of just like throw it somewhere else. I notice that like on bad days where I have some really negative thoughts or if I'm feeling like upset and I write about it in my journal, it's almost like I offload it off of my chest and into a safe space for me. It could work differently for you. Maybe you have a safe person that you like to talk to. Maybe you have a therapist that you have the luxury of working with when you, when you feel like that. But some days, a pen and paper is really all you need to just help get things off your chest. It might not make you feel 100% better, but it definitely will lift some weight off of you. In my journal, I primarily like to keep it as like memory keeping and stuff. So I will flip through all the pages kind of at the end of the year or whenever I feel like it and just kind of relive some of those days. So uh, there was one saying that I heard and where did I, where did I hear this? must have been from a YouTube video that I watched recently, but they say that the faintest of inks is still more powerful than the strongest of memories. And I think that's so true. I re I, I'm gonna have to I'll put it on the screen because I'm not trying to steal that as mine. Those are not my words, but th that really resonated with me because obviously I'm a big journaler and it helps me to reflect. Okay, that I'm done with the journal. I'm, if, if the journaling thing is not for you, I have some more tips. The next thing that I started doing, I think it was within the last year, is that I only, and come closer, I come closer, I only talk nicely about myself. I no longer talk badly or negatively to myself about myself. More importantly, I don't say things that aren't true about myself. Things like, oh my god, I'm so stupid. Oh my god, I want to myself. I feel like the way that you talk to yourself is so important because like you're kind of setting a precedence, right? Like if you're talking to yourself like that, it almost seems like, well, if you're going to talk to yourself like that, then you're going to allow other people to talk about you like that. Like, no, 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 no. I am my biggest fan apart from my husband. Okay. Like I am my biggest fan. I love myself and I tell myself that every freaking day. And when I first started to do that, I felt like so dumb. I felt so dumb. I was like, oh, this makes me feel like I'm so full of myself and I'm so this and this and this and this. This is not to be confused with holding yourself accountable, okay? So we're always gonna hold ourselves accountable for 
bad decisions that we make. Okay, so like let's let's start there. But in general, change the vocabulary that you use around yourself. Instead of saying, oh my god, I'm so stupid, when you forget something, when you make a little mistake, when you this, that, or the other, instead of going, oh my god, I'm so stupid, change your thinking, change your vocabulary to, oh, I learned something today. Oh my god, it's so bright. Just by doing this little thing, by changing my language, by changing my vocabulary about how I talk to myself, it really, really made me love me more. When I used to say those things, I used to say to myself, would I ever say that to the person that I love? Would I ever say that to my best friend? Would I ever say that to my husband? Would I ever tell him, oh my god, you're so stupid. Oh my god, kill yourself. Like, I would never, those words would never come out of my mouth. So why is it okay that I'm doing that to myself? Stop it cut it bad you're done this year you're talking nicely to yourself and only nicely to yourself thank you thank you kindly obviously by practicing this and doing this constantly you're building your self-esteem but also like you're 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 ch you're training yourself you're changing the way that you think about yourself and after a while it'll just seem so natural to just change your mindset about yourself to only be positive and again this is very different from narcissism and it's different from thinking that you're the best person on the planet i mean you should be thinking that you're the best person on the planet stay humble there's a fine line between narcissism and like self-love and positivity you know like don't put other people down to lift yourself up that's there's more than enough space okay it's for everyone here to love ourselves thank you yeah i think that was one of the biggest things i don't even know what prompted me to do this i think i read it in a book i maybe i saw it online but i did notice that i would do these silly little things and i would say these silly little things about myself that weren't true and it just changing that and nipping that in the bud has really made me just love myself more and also my expectations and my self-esteem are so much higher now of like what I hold myself to and I find that because I'm so much nicer to myself I'm so much nicer to the people around me as well so in that same vein I don't say bad things about myself but I also don't say things anymore that aren't true and I know this is very vague let me explain you know I don't say things that aren't true because it's almost like I'm speaking it out into existence right like I just I don't want to say something that's not true and then have it like happen so i guess the only things that come out of my mouth even if they're not true are positive things so let me reiterate i don't say negative things that aren't true especially about like feelings and stuff if something inconveniences me i'm just i'm just not dramatic about it anymore respectfully i just if i don't feel that way i don't say it if something as simple as like if i spill a little bit of milk in the morning i don't go oh my god what the I hate my life. Oh, I'm so frustrated. I just go, oh, that was a little annoying, but that's fine. I'll live. I'll move on. This helps almost like rewire my brain. It helps me think like, okay, this is a minor inconvenience. It's not going to raise my cortisol. It's not raising my stress level. It's fine. We're dealing with our big feelings. It's fine. By even just doing this little thing, it helps me regulate my feelings. But it also makes it so that like little inconveniences are not the end of the world. You never really know how powerful your words are until you just stop doing all the negative stuff. Let's say you trip, you fall, and then you say, oh my god, this is the worst day ever, I hate my life. But is it really though? Is it really the worst day ever that you tripped and maybe you embarrassed yourself in front of a few friends is it the worst day of your life do you really hate your life because of one minor inconvenience i'm guessing no and obviously be true to yourself be true to your feelings if you're really having a bad day if you lost somebody really close to you obviously that is much different that is a whole trauma in and of itself but i'm talking about the minor little inconveniences that sometimes we just blow up to be huge and dramatic and crazy when it really shouldn't be I feel like you're raising your cortisol for no reason so anyway i've unlearned this bad habit and i mean obviously i'm not perfect sometimes it does happen but just being positive and taking things just with a grain of salt the next one i'm sorry it is going to be something that maybe you don't want to hear me say and you know what it is going to be very common sense and i'm sorry about it but working out exercising 
physical activity. It really does help. It does. And I'm not gonna spend too long here because we all know this, but let me just list off a few in case you wanted me to remind you about why exercise is good for you. First of all, it helps boost your energy. I think that is a big thing for me is when I don't work out and when I'm inactive and when I'm like, like a worm on the couch, I don't wanna do anything. I don't have any energy. I just don't. I don't but the minute that I get up and even move my body you don't have to go to the gym just move your body go for a walk walk around the house like whatever it is move your body you are going to thank yourself for it it's going to improve your mood better for your health on a serious note exercise does combat a lot of scary health conditions like high blood pressure exercising helps lower high blood pressure and high blood pressure leads to first of all high cortisol you're always stressed then it can develop into something more serious like a stroke and then even just that aside exercise is known to help boost your serotonin and help boost your overall mood so if you deal with depression or anxiety a lot of people say and myself included that exercise helps with that in general. So take that for what it is, talk to your GP, be very gentle and very light on yourself with this, but the bottom line is move your body. Move a little bit is what I'm saying, okay? Okay. Also, as a last little note in there, if you are scared to go to the gym or if you're scared to exercise for whatever reason, sometimes I like to gamify it, sometimes I like to think about it like it's a little social outing because going to the gym can be social and it can be fun the next one i know okay listen 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 again i'm sorry it's common sense but please i am begging you i'm begging you miss girl i'm begging you literally i need you to drink water i need you to drink more water can you at least like minimum drink like two liters of water a day again we won't spend too long here because this is obvious this is common sense all i know is that hot girls drink at least two liters of water a day at minimum that's all i know drinking water significantly affects your energy levels and your brain function do you have a headache did you drink water also this is like side note don't ever drink coffee on an empty stomach just don't do that drink water you should be drinking water. How are you drinking caffeine all day and then not drinking water? Listen, listen, it helps keep your skin clear. Your organs love it. And if we're talking about organs, your kidneys love it. And you know what happens if you don't drink water? Your kidneys start making stones. And I have never dealt with this, but I have heard that it is one of the most painful thing to go through in life. The next tip I have, the next little change that you can do to change your life is to change how you wake up in the morning. From like literally as early on as I can remember since I started using an alarm clock, these alarm clocks have been just nothing but rude, okay? First of all, they're loud as hell, blaring in your face, like why are you waking me up like that? This right here is what I used to be waking up to. No, 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 we're not doing that. First of all, I keep my alarm at like one of the highest levels because I have a chronic fear of being late. Um, but also, what is that? Don't do that to me. What I wake up to now is something that's a little nicer, something that's a little like less alarming. If you have an iPhone, you can set this up. And if you have an Android, I'm sure you guys have that function as well but it gradually plays, it gradually gets a little louder, it's nice, sing-songy, I'll play you a little. This is what I wake up to every morning. Isn't that beautiful? I literally go, mm, I'm awake. It might not be for everybody, especially those who are like super heavy sleepers. We are not waking up to this crazy, loud, chaotic, that is like, wanting to put yourself in fight or flight mode the minute that you wake up. Another thing that you can do as well is if you wear an Apple watch to sleep or some type of, I don't know if the other smart, smart watches do this, but the Apple watch actually just like pulsates. Um, and I don't think it makes any noise. At least I haven't heard it make any noise, but it literally just pulsates on your wrist to like wake you up. That is much better than whatever the hell was going on before. And if you don't have access to an iPhone or if your phone doesn't do this, or if you don't have a phone, they do have these like sun light alarm clocks now. They're, I checked Amazon and they were like $50 Canadian, but I'm sure you can find some cheaper ones. They literally like 
turn on the light like gradually and slowly because this is working off of your circadian rhythm which is really really good for your mental health and like your brain chemistry and this is how we are programmed as humans anyway we naturally wake up to the sun so having an alarm clock like that waking you up a little bit with light is so cool and such a good idea i would do that if i didn't sleep in like bed with my husband and also i don't have anywhere to put that but if i have my own side table in my next house i would love to get one of those because i just think those are so cool and i just feel like i would wake up every morning feeling so good next tip i'm piggying back piggying back i'm piggybacking off of the circadian rhythm tip is go out and see a little sun just a little bit it is so cold in canada right now it's january it's negative 25 degrees celsius outside the wind is hurting my face i am no longer going for my hot girl walks that i used to go in in the summer for an hour like i just cannot i will freeze and i will be miserable if i'm outside but even just sitting by the window having that little bit of sunlight and exposure just literally instantly like you can feel how much happier you are having a little bit of sunlight i am almost done i only have two more tips left for you the next one is learn when to say no this one I really struggled with because I hate FOMO, but it came to the point last year where I was being stretched so thin. Like every single weekend I had something to do. I had a lot of other things that I needed to add to, the, add to my calendar and I literally just had no time to take care of myself. So I've been learning now to just say no a little bit more if I feel so stretched thin and the FOMO is not worth the burnout and the FOMO is not worth what it does to your mental health when you don't take time to take care of yourself and I think the big thing here is that you just need to learn to take care of yourself and allot yourself that time to just literally chill like have your own personal self-care day have your day because if you do not make time to take care of yourself and take care of your body your body will decide it's rest time right now. Whether or not that's convenient for you, your body is gonna decide when it needs to take a rest if you keep pushing it and not resting for it. Say no sometimes. If you feel like you are too stretched thin, if you feel like you are you have no time for yourself, if you can't even breathe in between all of the things that you have to do, time out. Take some time for yourself. You're busy, block it out in your calendar. And that's also one thing that I really like to do is I like to, if I see that I have a bunch of things coming up in these weekends, I like to block out on my calendar that I'm busy this weekend. And you don't have to justify it to anybody. Just say literally, I'm busy that weekend. I can't, I have commitments. I have commitments to myself because if you want me to keep presenting to you as this person that is positive and happy and healthy, I need that time to take care of myself. The last thing that I have also may be common sense, but I think it really, I could really see the difference once I really established my routine. So I think, being able to establish routines, and it doesn't have to be this whole like, this is my daily routine, like have a little morning routine for yourself, have a little nighttime routine for yourself. Just having those little things at the beginning and the end of your day really help to just to get your mind and get your body ready for what is happening so in the morning i have the same little ritual the same little routine i wake up and i make sure i wake up with enough time to do these things without rushing so i wake up i wash my face i do my skincare i brush my teeth and then i go and i sit at my little desk and i do whatever makeup that i want to do that day and then i go and get dressed for work and then i go downstairs feed my dog pack my lunch and then like as I'm doing all those things and giving myself the time to go through these things slowly, it really just sets me up for my day. So by the time in my, I'm in my car, by the time I'm driving to work, I'm like, I'm awake, I'm ready for the day, it's gonna be a good day and I feel great. But on the days where maybe I don't get enough sleep and I let myself sleep in and then I'm rushing, I'm missing steps in my routine and I'm like trying to get out of the door and I don't do my morning routine, like I feel like my body's confused, I'm tired, I'm tired through work and then it's just, not the best day that I could be having. So setting out a routine like that for me helps like literally trigger in my brain, I'm gonna have a good day, I'm gonna have a good day, I did all my things, I did all my routines, I did all my little steps, I'm gonna have a good day. And then at the end of the night when I'm like preparing myself for bed, because I do the same things every single night, I like 
rinse my mouth out with my little water pick and then I floss and then I brush my teeth and then I do the mouthwash, wash my face, makeup off, skincare on, like chill, massage myself, massage my face. When I give myself the hour or whatever to do all of that, by the time I'm in bed, I'm like, oh girl, I'm ready to sleep. And I'm just like happy because I've gotten everything done. I know I took care of myself. I got everything in my routine done and I'm just happy. Obviously not everybody can do like a typical this is a day in my life routine because life is different. We do different things every single day. And especially for people that don't have a set schedule, that work night shift, that work shift work, having like little pockets of routine help keep you balanced in your life it kind of like anchors you to know that you at least have a few things that are the same thing every single day so that was a lot of talking i hope that you guys learned something i hope you guys pick something up from this i know a lot of it was you know common sense but i hope that just hearing it from me and hearing it from another person like a friend because we're friends. It helps motivate you to take care of yourself and to be the best version of yourself that you can be. And I did try to pick out the most, like things that most people can do without paying for subscriptions or like, I know obviously a big thing for me was going to therapy, but I know that's not easily accessible for a lot of people that don't have benefits or can't afford it. And so I left that off the list. I feel like these little things even just doing these little things can help change your world so much that you just really don't even, you don't even recognize yourself by the end of it because you're like, oh my God, I'm a changed person. I feel so much better compared to the person that I used to be. Like, I just, I don't know. I'm all for self growth. I feel like I've grown just immensely and so much over the last few years that I don't recognize who that person was just a few years ago. The insecure and always stressed always depressed always anxious person like i feel like i'm looking at a completely different person when i see how i used to be anyway i'm done i'm done talking thank you guys so much for your time and thank you for spending time with me i hope that you guys learned something and that you enjoyed the video uh of course i would love to hear any uh, input from you guys like let me know what your little tips are maybe for me that i don't know like tell me something that you do in your day that makes you feel good and that's just a little change that i can implement um in my life so until then i will see you guys in my next video bye